What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Colin. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about ball pythons. So when, we come, when people come into the store, um, they often ask me when I'm sending them home with their first ball python, they ask um, first, how fast is my snake going to grow? And secondly, how uh, large is my ball python going to get? And the answer I usually have is, it depends for these reasons. So there's three main factors uh, to consider when we talk about this. The first factor we want to consider is genetics. So just like humans, all snakes have a genetic potential, meaning how big they can get from the time they're born. So these guys all hardwired in, they already have a maximum potential of what they can achieve. Now, when it comes to ball pythons, typically for a female, that's gonna be a bit on the larger side, and for a male, uh, that's gonna be on the smaller side. So the maximum size a ball python can get is the upper, extreme upper end is about 72 inches or six feet. Um, on average, you'll see most ball pythons will fall around anywhere from that 43 to 48 inch mark. Males, of course, are gonna be a little bit smaller, anywhere from 36 inches on up to 43 inches on average. So when it comes to ball pythons, typically uh, most people will consider a female to be about of about mature size at anywhere from about uh, three years on up. And then usually at that 1700 gram mark, um, for a male, uh, you know, they're usually breedable at about a year and a half, um, although it is possible to do it younger. You never want to breed any animal that's usually under, under that age for a male. But for females, we definitely recommend at least three years of age uh, just for optimum health. Although, like I said, it, it is possible. Um, for example, you can have males that will reach 1,000 or like a kilogram, uh, you know, in weight at one year of age. But then again, just like humans, um, there are those genetic outliers. So just like I'm really tall, some people are born really short and they'll never be tall, just like I'll never be short. Um, a lot of that just has to do with the genetic potential. So in the wild as well, um, it's gonna take them on average a lot longer to reach that mature size than compared to captivity, um, simply because conditions are more difficult, the food availability and supply is not as consistent, and you know dietary needs and changes. The other thing to consider too, um, in captivity, compared to their wild counterparts, these guys lead a pretty sedentary lifestyle. They can be active at times, but compared to a snake that's in the wild its entire life, um, the caloric needs are a lot different, and the metabolic rate is generally gonna be a lot slower um, than a snake that's in the wild. How long that takes um, really depends on uh, multiple factors. So our second factor is, um, it's gonna be diet. So, uh, as we all know, um, ball pythons can be finicky eaters sometimes, um, but your dietary prey item type and then your schedule is gonna really dictate um, your growth potential as well. So on a snake this size, like this little GHI ball python, this guy's about three to four months old. When they hatch, they're about uh, 10 inches long. This guy's almost just a little bit over a foot. On average, these guys I usually recommend feeding every seven to 10 days, and then we usually feed an appropriate size prey item. At this size, um, they're usually eating mice. If you can get them onto rats, that's usually a little bit better um, if you're trying to grow your snake a little bit faster. Um, and then for a snake this size, um, this is a, an adult female normal. Um, she's a couple years old, um, but for a snake this size, typically what I recommend is feeding every two to three weeks. Um, it really depends. Um, and then the third factor would be um, husbandry. So when it comes to genetic potential or how fast the snake's gonna grow and how large the snake's gonna grow, your husbandry really plays into it too. Um, so keeping on a normal feeding regimen, and obviously um, if your snake goes off food for a couple weeks or you've had an issue with eating or there was a medical, pro medical problem, of course that's gonna slow down the speed at which your snake gets to size. The second thing though would be um, temperature. So if you're keeping a snake at suboptimal temperature, uh, it's going to have a harder time digesting its food, its me metabolic rate um, is going to be highly dependent on the temperature. So if we have temperatures that are way too low, we're also going to have a uh, harder time to grow. Um, just because we can't digest uh, as well without that temperature. Another interesting fact about ball pythons is, since about the 1980s, they've uh, imported about 3 million ball pythons. So with as many ball pythons as we have in the hobby currently, um, and beings that most people have chosen to breed for, you know, genetic mutations and color morphs instead of specific locales or size, um, what we're seeing really now is it's just this really generalized average in size. In fact, um, it's pretty rare to find ball pythons that are over five feet in length anymore. 
Um, there used to be a locality coming out of West Africa called a Volta, and those would sometimes easily be right around six foot in length. But it's very uncommon, even for like, you know, a big female bull to find anything over four feet these days. Not to say that they're not out there and it's not possible, um, but it's a lot less common. So with this sort of bell curve we've established based upon uh, imp importation and selective breeding, we kind of reached that median or that average um, size dispersion, and that's where we're at in this point. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, be sure to message us on our Facebook or our YouTube channel or give our store a call. Thanks, and have a great day.